So we're starting in JDeveloper where we're going to create a new Fusion type of application. So this is the regular type of ADF application that you'll be creating. And we give it a name and the package name and we click finish. So this creates for us a model project that is using Oracle ADF business components in it. Um, so again, nothing special here. The next step is to actually create some business components and I'm going to create some business components from table, picking up a connection that I have to an Oracle database in the cloud. So just like any database, I can connect to it um, with the username and password and the credentials. Do a query on the data dictionary, um, specifically here I only have one table, an employees table, and I'm going to just go through the wizard and create an entity object, view object, and application models based on this um, table in the database. Now we can actually go and edit the things that were created. For example, if we go into the entity object and add a validation to the salary field over here, we can add a new validation, uh, call it salary range, and what we want to do is make sure that the salary is in a specific range of allowed values. And basically we're sh just showing this uh, so you can see how we can then leverage this business logic in other places. So we we'll put here validation, salary must be above zero, less than 25,000. And we can even put in an error message here, salary out of range. All right, so nothing special here, regular ADFBC development that you've probably done before. Uh, the next thing is that we're going to go into the application module and create a REST service. We first need to define a version number for this REST service because REST services can be versioned. We're going to create version 1 here, like this. And then we'll be able to create the REST service itself. This will create a new project. And we're going to give a name to this service. We're going to call it employee underscore C. This is a custom uh, REST service, so that's the name that we're giving it. Again, clicking save. Now, we're going to deploy this project, but before I'm going to deploy it, I'm going to set um, some properties. Uh, specifically, if I go into the REST service uh, project, I'm going to change the context root here to something that is easier to remember. Okay. Then I'm going to go into the application properties, and in the deployment section, I'm going to indicate that we want to include in the ear file that is being generated also the results of what's inside the REST project. And one last thing is under the deployment there's a node for WebLogic and over here I just want to eliminate the creation of uh, JDBC resources. We're going to use a data source in WebLogic for connection to the database. Then we're just going over and deploying our application into an IR file. So this is going to deploy it onto my local machine. And you can see where it is, if you go to the deployment tab, and you'll see that an ear file was generated for you. All right, so now let's switch over to JCS. So the Java Cloud Service, we're going to lock and edit the configuration in order to install a new deployment. And we're going to pick it from a file. Um, and this is basically our project, okay? and there's a deploy directory. We're going to pick up the file. Um, let's go through the wizard. An important thing is to indicate which servers you want to deploy to. I'm deploying to the whole cluster. And then at the end, just click Finish. So an important thing to note here is that this application uses a data source. So um, I already created a data source, but you should create a data source that maps to the one that your application is using. Okay. Once you deployed it under deployment, if everything worked okay, your application should be in prepared mode. You might want to start it. So go to the control, pick your application, and click Start Serving All Requests. Once the deployment is done, all you need is 
the IP address of your laptop or so your JCS instance. Um, the name of your project, last and one, which is the version, should give you the names of the services you have. Okay, and um, you can copy the describe, for example. Okay, so let's put it here. <coughs> And you'll have the describe of the various methods or objects. We have the employees resource here. So we're going to paste it here. And you'll have the results coming back from your database. All right, the next thing you might want to do is uh, get the URL for the describe of the service. So this is actually metadata about the service and what it returns. And this is what we need for the Oracle Application Builder cloud service. So now that we have this, let's open a new tab and navigate to an instance of the Oracle Application Builder cloud service. We can create a new application, call it my ADF app, choose a template and create a tab or two. I'm going to just have one called employee. And then when you click Finish, you'll be taken into the visual editor for your application. And um, in here, you can switch over to the data designer. And we're going to work with services. And we're going to add a service. And it's a custom service. We're going to give it a name. And you need to paste the URL to the describe. I'm not using any security in this case. So we'll turn this to none and click the V. And now we have our service available here. When you click Next, you'll see any related items. Then Next, you'll see the fields. You can then decide which fields you want to include. You can rename them if you want to. And you can even test the service to see the actual results that you're getting back from the database. Great. So now that you added this service as a custom object, you can basically go to the UI designer and start designing your page. For example, drag a table onto the ABCS page, connect it to the service you chose, pick the fields that you want to show, enable all sorts of operation. For example, a click on a name would navigate to edit. You can add filters click finish and now run your application okay and this is data coming from our database in the cloud service through adf into our screen and um, you can also update stuff so if we click on shy for example and try and update the salary to be minus nine and click save hey this is the error message that we specified in adf so this works we can also create a new employee. For example, Marcus, which is employee number nine. He's a manager with a nice salary. And now we have it in our table. Uh, we can also filter the table, of course. So for example, if we do M, we'll just get Mike and Marcus. Okay. Um, of course, ABCS can create a much richer UI. For example, um, we can split the screen into two sections, take the table, move it to the left, and then on the right side, maybe add a nice donut chart like this. Connect it to our object, select the salary as the slice and the name as the color, and voila, you now have a nice chart showing the data about your employees. And by the way, ABCS can create a responsive application. So if you go back to a smaller device, you now have the smaller application with a responsive UI, but all the functionality is still available for you directly in here. So this is it. What you created here is an ABCS application that creates a JET-based UI getting the data from ADF.